Hello, we are here. We have done two from Sweden, two from Estonia, and we're back for a two beers from Finland, but obviously only one in this review. I'm going to ask Quino to tell us all about the beer we're about to talk about. So this is, and I'm going to horribly mangle the pronunciation of this, it's Sinibrikov Porter. Um, Sinibrikov, uh, Finnish, first brewed 1957. The alcohol hall content is 7.2%. Um, and there's some blurb in here about uh, who is Russian. So um, this the guy who started this. Packed his family into wagons and set off towards Finland to make his fortune. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, and this is on, dark. Bangs on about Porter for a bit. Isn't it nice in the winter? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so unlike many Baltic porters, this is a nice bit of knowledge. Um, Sinibrikov's version is brewed with top fermenting yeast from Guinness, no less. The beer is unfiltered, although excess yeast is removed by separation. It's also brewed with four different malts Pilsner, Munich, Brown, and Caramel, and the hopped with Sars and Nugget hops. The Beverage Testing Institute in Chicago. Can we have the Reading Testing Institute here? This is it. This is it. This is yeah. Ranked it among the United States' best imported beers, and it has twice won silver in the Brewing Industry International Awards. That sounds a bit more of a big thing to win. The Beverage Testing Institute in Chicago. I mean, look at the head. Yeah. It looks... It's just brown. It's completely brown. Yeah. That looks like it's going to be a beast. It is going to be and a beast. I've, I've got some, so I'll put my uh, disclaimer in. I have had this before um, when we were on holiday in Finland, which is where this bottle came from. Um, on Sunday, we were in Helsinki and we just touched down and we checked in and we were desperately looking for somewhere good to eat. And we traipsed across town to this very highly recommended little independent restaurant with huge queues, but we stuck out the queues and got served eventually. And it just said on the board, beers, it just said lager, porter, I can't remember what the other one was, so I said I will have the porter, and this what this came out. And could we find this again in Finland in any of the state-run alcohol shops? Could we bugger? We have to buy this in Sweden. There we go. So, can you, have you read the tasting notes? Do you want to have a little read of those? Yeah, so the tasting notes. Uh, dark with a dark tan head. Yes. It has a fairly plain roasted malt aroma without too many notes. We'll find out. But on that. tasting, it develops into a stronger, slightly burnt coffee flavour. This is spelt American. Um, with hints of toast, licorice and dried fruit. Bitterness is balanced and hangs on just long enough to finish off the experience. Okay, so it should smell a bit roasty. Okay, let's go for the smell. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It smells, it, smells, it smells quite chocolatey as well, actually. It, it's, yeah, it smells like those, um, do you remember, you still get them, I think, I, my nan used to get them for me over Christmas, those famous names, the cured chocolates. Oh, know, when, yeah. When you, when you get the cellophane off and open it, you go, ooh, that smells yeah. good. <laughs> That's a very similar smell to me. All the thing, all the fun things I remember from eating them. So how do we say cheers in Finnish? Um, as our person off camera, I remember how to do this, because I've completely forgotten. Kipis! 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 Kipis. Okay. I'll be honest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it doesn't taste as nice as I was expecting it to taste. That was kind of... Yeah, that was what I thought when I had the it. The Saku Porter was nicer. This is... Really creamy. It's really creamy. It's very roasty. Really yeah, roasty. Bitterly bitter, 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 roasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It tastes a bit like alcoholic coffee. I think that's quite nice way of summing it up very quickly. Uh, is which it? isn't a bad thing, I must say, because I love coffee. But I expected more from this percentage, I must say. I expected it to taste a bit more, had a bit more of oomph to it. It's... um. Well, I suppose it depends which way you look at it, because... Um, it is last, nice, though. Yeah, I mean, the last couple of porters that we've had, um, the previous couple of reviews, have, they've both tasted quite sweet. Mm. Um, the Saku tasted sweet, but it had the balance underneath. This isn't um, sweet. The, the, the Avacot just tasted a sort of sweet roundness. Mm. Um, 
this this kind of has the roast and it just and it quite nicely disguises the fact it's seven point two. It is quite hefty. Mm. Um, you wouldn't necessarily realise it was seven two on the first couple of years. It is nice. It's not sweet. It tastes like dark chocolate and coffee rolled yeah, into yeah. one. Mm. What do you think, Tony? It's, I'll get a, a burnt taste. It is a bit burnt. Yeah. Would you say it's... No, you... Almost like burnt, burnt toast. Would you say it's too burnt, too pronounced? Well, it depends, yeah. yeah. I, I like it, personally. But yeah, that is the... Um, to me, that's the, the overriding flavour. Burnt toast. It just tastes so much like coffee to me. I can see where you're getting the burnt toast from, actually. So yeah. when, you, when, you, when you've had it in the mouth and it gets to the back yeah, of it, yeah, that's yeah. where it comes mm. in, doesn't it? Yeah. So basically what you're saying is we're drinking a carcinogen. <laughs> <laughs> it's still nice. Don't get me wrong. This is a nice beer. This is, you know... Mm. If, again, the litmus test, would I rather have this or Doom Bar Green Guy IPA? This. Oh, Any day oh, yeah. Like no, no questions asked. It's lovely. It's so but, it's nice. But the fact is, that, and, and Tony will attest this, when you start to try all these beers in this book, and they're the beers you must try before you die, your expectations are high. You expect them to be all good. You, you think they've, they've chosen yeah, them. Yeah. And then you start to think, actually, I'm going to become a bit critical of the book, actually you start to think, have they chosen just a cross-section of beers? They've gone, right, This we've got to have beers in from these countries that pick these well, ones. Well, was so, I, I, I believe Bombardier was in the book, wasn't it? It was, it was. So, you know, and so yeah. was Doombar, so was Budweiser. I mean, I mean, can you can you imagine if there's like you know this is this is a finished beer, right? There's a couple, there's two or three finished guys doing the book right now, and they've just got they've so got they've gone to great expense to get a bottle of Bombardier in to do the book, and they're sat there going, whoa. But here's the thing: is this book does not is not one thousand one best beers in the world. That is not. It's ones you must try. So it's not about what are best. It's about the difference of beers that are available in the world, different styles, different tastes, different contexts in history. So actually, it's not that all you're never going to like. And also, it would be impossible if you like you like every single beer in the book. It's never going to happen. You'd have to be a functioning alcoholic to not know. Uh, yeah, I think, well, or dysfunctional, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but this is still in context of beers, especially a found of beers from lots of countries. Have, have They normally lot, pit a lot of beers that are not the modern craft beer. They are the beers that set things going. They're the beers that set the precedent for how the beer industries in those countries mm. kept going. Now, in, now, for the USA beers and the Belgian beers and the England beers, it's a bit easier because those... those, those Beer industries are much more mature yeah. than the than the than the, the sort of the, the modern beer industries in the other country. So this beer is, you know, first brewed 1957. When that came out, this is probably groundbreaking. It's probably a beer that people thought was amazing. It's like, you know, we've had rubbish beers. You know, we've had lager, we've had crap, you know, and, and this is one that stood the test of time since 57, and it's still a good beer. So I think actually it is very easy to say. There are beers in here which are not good, and it's also that you can go well. Actually, they're they're here for a context. So, rant over. Here endeth the sermon. Yeah. Well, sorry. I just you know <laughs> I think that's that's the interesting thing about this book. Um, as I've been, I've been introduced to such a wide range of different beers. Yeah, yeah. Um, that I would never ever have before. Never even be. No, would never even see to try out. Not even the what the exact beers, mm. but the styles of the beers. Yeah. And I've learned to appreciate dark beers so much more. Mm-hmm. From this, and now I actually drink more dark beers in pubs. Uh, you know, I now drink. Yeah, yeah we're we're being quite regular drink, drinking buddies. I now drink quite a lot of dark beers. I love a milk style. Um, I love a porter. Um, they're mild, so um, this is a this is still a good beer. Yeah, I just think the flavour, the, the balance of the flavours isn't quite there for me. It's it's too much down the one side of being burnt, roasty. Yeah, it actually sweet. lacks sweetness. Mm. Yeah, I think that's. I think it's the kind of thing, if you like those flavours, you'll go a bundle on it. But yes. I think most people would probably say oh, a few sips is enough. Yeah. Well, I like it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want too much of it, would you? <laughs> uh, no, that's a small bottle. It's, yeah. quite, it's quite intense flavour when you get to yeah. this. It's quite mm. roast, it's quite mm. that burnt, and you're left that aftertaste yeah. of burntness. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, I think I need a good slug of water before we do the next one. Yeah, the next the next one is fascinating. I don't know. The next oh. one is just 
Uh, we're going to spend quite a bit of time on the, on the bottle in the next one, I think. So uh, The next one's going to be interesting. Yeah, and I, I don't think any of us have any idea what it's going to be like. There's nope. no conception. So let's leave this one here. We've hit 10 minutes again, which is great. Good trailer for the next bit, though. Uh, yes. Be watching. Look forward to the next beer review on 1001 Beers. You must try before you die. Goodbye. Goodbye.